In this video, I'll demonstrate two methods for removing the background of a photo, the Cutout Lab and the Smart Selection Mask. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. In my first example, I want to remove everything except the dog's face. I'll choose Image, Cutout Lab, and expand the window. The first step is to trace the highlighter around the area I want to keep. The highlighter tool is active, and I can change its color. The next step is to choose which area to keep, inside or outside the highlighted area. I'll use the Inside Fill tool and click inside the tracing. I'll click Preview to check the results so far, and zoom in to see more detail. I can add a background in black matte, white matte, or grayscale to make it easier to see the cutout results. For the parts that need to be filled in, I'll click Add Detail, adjust the nib size, and drag around to include more of the photo. I've added a bit too much, so I'll use Remove Detail to take out some areas. For Cutout Results, if I keep the Cutout option, I'll be left with just the cutout. I can choose to create the cutout as a clip mask, or choose Cutout and Original Image to keep the original image intact. I'll click OK, and now in the Objects Docker I have two objects, Object 1, which is the cutout, and Background, which is the original photo. I'll click the eye icon to hide the background. For a new background, I'll use File, Import, double-click to place the photo at its full size, and move the imported photo below the cutout. With the cutout as the active object, I can use the Pick tool to resize and move it as needed. For my second example, I'll use a mask to remove the background from this tiger photo. Some editing tools can't be applied to backgrounds, so in the Object Stalker I'll click this icon to create an object from the background. From the Mask Tool group I'll choose Smart Selection Mask, choose Normal Mode to define the initial area, and use this nib size. I'll drag the mouse within the tiger, which masks just about the whole thing. To add the bits that weren't included, I'll switch to Additive Mode, or I could keep the Shift key pressed while dragging. Now a little too much was included, so I'll use Subtractive Mode, or the Control key, reduce the nib size by holding the Alt key while dragging down, and drag along parts to exclude from the mask. To make the mask border a bit more realistic, I'll add a feathering effect. I'll choose Mask, Mask Outline, Feather, and click the overlay icon to see a preview of the results. A low width to the inside will do the trick. The area inside the mask is what would be removed when I use Control X. I can see this when I choose Mask, Mask Overlay. The red area is what will be kept. So I'll choose Mask, Invert Mask, and now it's the tiger that will remain. When I press Control X, the background is removed. I'll copy the tiger to use in another document open that document, and paste in the tiger. The pick tool is active, so I can move the tiger into its comfy new spot. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on background removal in PhotoPaint. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.